Hello everyone and welcome back to the Old Man in the Reed. My name is Jerry. Today I'm going to discuss another one of my favorite writers. Uh, uh, that's Kenza Burl Oi. Um, Oi uh, was born in 1935 and he died in 2023, just a few months before I'm actually filming this video. Um, he was a Japanese novelist, a short uh, story writer, and an essayist. Um, he won the 1994 uh, Nobel Prize in Literature. Just a, a, quite an exceptionally good writer. Uh, he wrote a lot of political and uh, philosophical books, but most of what he wrote um, were I would say semi-autobiographical, loosely based on himself and his son. Uh, his son uh, was uh, born mentally challenged, uh, and so he talks about that quite often in his books. And um, he also uses himself or loosely uh, based on himself. Uh, portrayal of uh, uh, somebody who he's really fairly unkind in uh, describing and he points out character flaws that uh, he evidently believed he had. Uh, but uh, just an exceptionally good writer, uh, so I'll show you the, the books I've read. Uh, the first book I have has one of the best titles of a book I've uh, read, Nip the Buds, Shoot the Kids. Uh, now this is a, a story about a group of uh, boys from a reformatory who are uh, taken out to, to a remote village. Uh, this takes place during World War II. Um, they're taken there to live. Uh, uh, and they're uh, uh, they they're there for a while, and then they're uh, abandoned in the village by the um, villagers, who believe that a uh, plague has broken out in their village, uh, and so the the boys are left on their own. Uh, they uh, it's a very dark and dismal type story. And it's about the cruelty that, uh, that uh, they were subjected to and uh, the efforts they had to go through to survive. Uh, the next book is A Personal Matter. Uh, this was published in 1964. And uh, this is uh, the story of a man whose wife uh, has given birth to a, a baby or a boy with a deformed head and brain damage. Uh, um, he is actually hoping that the boy will die. He feels shame and disgust. And it's, uh, it's about uh, a man trying to deal with uh, that and I think uh, Oi is describing some of the feelings he had, uh, but uh, just quite a ex ex exceptional book, uh, and uh, he had that's a subject he uh, returned to fairly frequently. Uh, the next book I have, published in 1965, is Hiroshima Notes, and this is uh, essays. Uh, that are uh, about survival, survivors uh, from the Hiroshima uh, atomic bomb explosion. Uh, he talks uh, a lot about the devastation of the city and uh, just the horrific uh, injuries uh, that the uh, survivors were suffering, both immediately after uh, the bomb and years after. In 1967 he published The Silent Cry. Uh, this is the, the story that's about two brothers uh, and it takes place in the 
early 1960s. Uh, it's narrated by uh, one of the brothers, uh, Mitusa Burrell. Uh, he's uh, a professor, uh, but he's in a very difficult marriage. Uh, his son is in an, uh, has been left in an institution because of brain damage. Uh, but he leaves his job and uh, moves to uh, the village where his brother Takashi lives. Uh, uh, eventually the brothers have a disagreement and uh, Mitsuburo moves, moves away to a, another place. Uh, and Taka, Takashi then uh, organizes a group for an uprising against the emperor. In 1969, he published Teach Us to Outgrow, Outgrow Our Madness. And this is actually four novellas. Uh, the first is The Day He Himself Shall Wipe My Tears Away. And it's about a man who uh, believes he is dying uh, of liver cancer. Uh, the, another one titled Prize Stock. And this is about a young boy and a downed black uh, American pilot during World War II. Uh, then uh, Teach Us to Outgrow Our Madness is about a, a, a fat man uh, with a mentally disabled son uh, and uh, that man slowly descends into madness. And then uh, the final story is Agui the sky monster, uh, and uh, this is about a young man hired to be a companion to a mentally unstable man. In 1983, he published Rouse Up, O Young Men of the New Age. Uh, and. Uh, uh, like much of his work, this is loosely based on his own life, but it's about uh, a re the relationship between a father and a severely mentally handicapped son. In 1989, he published An Echo of Heaven, uh, and this is about a woman uh, based on a a friend of Oi's named Marie, who, who went on a lifetime search for spiritual peace uh, after the suicide of her two children. Uh, and uh, she goes on a journey experimenting with religion and uh, religious cults and uh, sex. And uh, it leads her to California and then Mexico. In 1990, he published A Quiet Life, and uh, this is a story narrated by the daughter of a writer. Uh, she has an older brother who is mentally disabled, uh, but musically talented, and that describes uh, Oi's uh, mentally handicapped son. He had, uh, was quite musically talented, uh, and she finds herself the head of the family when her family accepts, or when her father accepts a visiting professorship in California. Uh, in 1999, he published Somersault, uh, and this is about the re-emergence of a radical religious cult. Uh, this is a cult that had folded uh, uh, previously about 10 years before and uh, it's uh, because of uh, the failings of their predictions which they had been predicting the end of the world within two to three years and when that time passed uh, they they fell out of favor but it's uh, the group is led by a couple of men uh, one referred to as guide and the other patron and the way they uh, had operated is patron would talk in gibberish and then guide, guide 
would uh, interpret that uh, gibberish into noble sounding uh, narration but uh, and th that's how they were coming up with their uh, end of the world predictions but uh, uh, then the uh, the uh, group that the two start to reform the group uh, the story is told through the eyes of a young man named Oji and uh, um, he uh, talked about talks about the leader the two leaders and uh, a young sis assistant they have a woman named Dancer in, uh, in, in the year 2000 uh, he published the Changeling, uh, and uh, this is a, a fictional account of uh, the author's relationship with him between himself and his brother-in-law, who had committed suicide. And again, this is uh, Oi portraying himself in a very unkind manner uh, and bringing out the flaws he believes he has in his character. And finally, uh, the last book I have is was published in 2009. Uh, this is Death by Water, and uh, this is another book uh, of Oi um, using himself as a fictionalized character. Uh, uh, he goes to his sister's house um, to look through uh, documents that relate to his father's actions uh, before his father's death. Uh, his father was a part of a group that worshipped the Emperor, uh, but they were uh, plotting to kill him after Japan's surrender. Uh, and uh, a lot of the story also is about uh, his relationship with his brain damaged son. So that's the books I've read by Kenzaburo Oi. Uh, just a wonderful writer, just uh, writes some really interesting books uh, and uh, very enjoyable uh, reads. So I want to thank you for watching and hopefully you'll watch another of my videos. Thanks.